have a nice program today. It's a little bit different. It's not classical music. It's uh, jazz. And I'd like to introduce, well, oh, one more thing. If you have, if you're expecting any calls, will you please turn your iPhone off, your cell phone off? Um, OK, so I'd like to introduce Stan Head, who is in our uh, Central Arizona concert band. Most of you heard that last night at the, at the square, which really was fun. And he plays uh, uh, in the drum section, percussion section. And Stan Gibb will introduce his wonderful group. So okay. take it away. <laughs> we have on the drums, George Andrus. <clears throat> She knew I was going to do jazz. So I thought I'd try to make this kind of something which you can learn a little bit about jazz. So I have a little bit of an introduction to each tune, and each tune is going to be a different style of jazz. The first thing I wanted to say is that most people don't realize that, that according to the world, the jazz idiom is given the credit to the United States because jazz evolved in the United States in the early 20th century, and it was a combination of the of the uh, African musical culture going getting together with the Western uh, Western uh, European musical culture. And when you, when you look at the different idioms there, the African musical culture, its emphasis is on pulse and beat, syncopation, rhythm is very important. And they had percussion, percussion instruments, they brought those. And importantly, they did improvising. They created the music as they were playing it. Then when you compare that to the uh, European culture, a lot different because the European culture, you have got a composer that writes a song. And that means it has to be notation. And so notation did evolve in Europe. So there's notation, we can write the music down, and then they hand it to a performer. And the performer does his or her best to do what the composer wants, okay? Of course, what else came from, from, uh, from Europe was a highly developed system of harmony and highly developed musical instruments. But when you combine those two things, an interesting thing happened in, the, in forms of art. Because the idea of improvising and composing came together. And so now we have somebody writes a song, that's the creator, but then when they give it to the group, Everybody in the group becomes part of the creation of that. Becomes part of the creation of that because they, but it's spontaneous. It's by spontaneous creativity. <clears throat> and so that's what you're going to see here today. The first piece we're going to play is a Dixieland jazz piece because that was the first form that evolved from this combination of those two cultures. And what we're going to do is we're going to show, first of all, we're going to be playing uh, When the Saints Come Marching In. Familiar with that too? <laughs> And, and David is going to be playing the melody. And what I'm going to be doing is in I'm going to improvise in between the phrases little musical comments. I'm not going to get in his way, hopefully, but I'll just stop throwing a few notes, like a little comment, you know. When you, if somebody was going to say, oh, when the saints go marching in, I might say, oh, cool, 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 cool. I'm going to the saints coming. Okay, that's what, I, that's what I'm going to be doing with my part. Okay, and now we're going to flip. I'm going to play the melody. David is going to do the comments. And then, uh, let's see. Then David is going to do, <clears throat> take over the melody. He's going to be creating his own melody. And then when he gets done doing that, then I will do the same thing, create my own melody. Uh, let's see, I guess, is there anything else I need to say about that? Oh, and, and George Andrews, I have to say this. George Andrews is going to be playing the washboard. Okay? Perfect for this style of music. That's it. That's it. That's it. He's going to be playing it. My wife would like me to do the washboard at home a lot. <laughs> if she's watching this, she may get some ideas. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. Thank you. 
And I came here very, very kind. <laughs> so as time went on, from the, 20, the beginning of the 20th century up until about the 1930s and 1940s, the bands got bigger. And of course, this music was dancing music, you know. What was really, you know, people would dance to it all the time because of the beat. You know, that's what the, the Africans brought home was that beat. And everyone else dance to the beat. So they end up, we end up with a bunch of dance bands, big dance bands now. 20 people in the band, not just a small group of four or five or six people. And so if you're going to have people uh, improvise, you can't have 20 people improvising at the same time. That's not going to work. So the dance music got away from a little bit from improvising. And, uh, and when you listen to those recordings, there's very little space for actual creative improvising. And some of those recordings of, you know, for instance, Glenn Miller, Count Basie, Tommy Dorsey, Duke Ellington, all those people have very little, very little bits of improvising. But it spread throughout the country because of the 78 RPM rate of records. That industry was developing, and the, uh, record, and the uh, radio industry was developing, and these bands were playing in dance halls. So you go and play in a dance hall, be broadcast all over that, the area, the records were taken all over the country, and then the Second World War, the United States Army took the records and the music throughout the world. So within a couple of decades, this art form was born in America, which is important to us, I think Americans, it should be important to Americans, was in the whole, through the whole world. Uh, so anyway, we are going to do a dance tune from the big band days. Don't get around much anymore, do go into the tune. We'll go through the tune and then we'll do a solo, I'll do a solo. Uh, uh, David will do a solo, and uh, Mark will do a solo. And then we're going to do something that a lot of small groups do. The, the big bands don't do this. They'll, we will do what they call take fours. You know? If you're with a bunch of musicians and you're playing along, right in the middle of your playing, somebody will say, OK, let's take fours. And that means that we're going to take four measures each in our improvisation. So I'll play four bars, then it goes to the drummer, and he'll play four bars. Of course, he's He's not playing a melody necessarily, but he's playing all the colors that he's got, the cymbals, the you know, the low toms, the high toms. He's got all those colors to work with. So it's kind of a melody, what he's working with. And then it goes back to guitar, then back to drums, then it goes to the bass player, to drums, and then back to me and to drums, and we go back into the tune. So that's, that's what to listen for in this style of music. <laughs>
same to that same harmonic uh, uh, backup. Ornithology was the name of that. Because his nickname was Bird. Okay. His nickname was Bird. Charlie Parker was known as Bird. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're gonna try this really fast. It's it's uh, it's a challenge. And then and then oh another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna suddenly change the tempo. And so you'll, you'll kind of get an idea of what, what could be done with music to make it undanceable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
something different and that was that was actually the biggest best selling recording oh no uh, it was the best most often requested song on, on the radio stations would ask for requests so we are going to oh it's another thing does, does do any of you remember the swingle singers yeah, yeah. yes yeah. okay yeah. they were they were like doing Bach with the ribbon section and uh, Walter Carlos, now that's a name you probably don't remember, but Walter Carlos did a recording of switched on, called Switched on Bach, a lot of Bach pieces, and he used synthesizer, he used a Moog synthesizer to create them. Okay, so what we're gonna do tonight is uh, we're gonna play Bach Invention in D minor, and we're gonna do it in a straight, we're gonna alternate between straight and swing. Now, if you're not sure what straight and swing is, <laughs> this is this is the way Bach wrote this: straight. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, we're going to do a piece uh, uh, written, written by um, Dizzy Gillespie. It was recorded and made famous long ago by Cal Jeter, a vibraphone composer. <coughs> I just want to say something quickly about the vibraphone. People ask me, what, do you, what instrument do you play? And I said, I play the vibraphone. <laughs> Nine out of ten times, what's that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I got to go through this, this, this whole explanation. But, uh, and the explanation is that the vibraphone was, was created for the vaudeville orchestras. So the percussionists in the vaudeville orchestra could play a little, every once in a while, a little, little bell like sound. So he just reach over there and play a bell like sound. But then it wasn't long before two jazz performers uh, turned around and pulled the vibraphone out of the out of the orchestra pit and uh, and played jazz. And that was the first generation of, of jazz players. Uh, Cal uh, Cal Jader, well, not only did Cal Jader, pardon me. Uh, that was uh, Lionel Hampton and Red Norma. And so they brought the instrument out for jazz. And ever since then, it's been a jazz instrument. Uh, so anyway, I, I, I say that because Cal Jader, he was the, he was the kind, he was the, it was in the days of Cal Jader that I used to go to San Francisco in the nightclubs and listen to jazz. And, and that's what made me want to play the vibraphone. That's what made me want to play jazz and play the vibraphone. Uh, so this is the one, the song that he made big. And the, the fun thing about this, maybe musicians don't think it's so much fun, but there's a place where the musicians just say, what you want, what you want, in rhythm, the right place. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs>
what the tune is going to be done. It would be fun to analyze that, but we don't have time. We're just going to have it.
something about Jeff? Yes. Hopefully, maybe you'll have a liking for Jeff. You didn't have one before. Uh, we musicians, we love doing that because we love the idea of being able to be creative and not just have to play what the guy, the big guy wrote, you know? Mm -hmm. And add our own personality to it. So thanks again. I got to be honest.